However, yeah. all of these organs have been subsequently shown to have useful function, and some of them, indeed, functions necessary essential for life. See how that? Now, this points out what I get uh, accused of, and I did at work a lot, is you know, you Christians, you Christians, you're so inflexible, you're so rigid, you don't change. At least science changes with the times. I said, that's right, because you guys don't have the truth. I do. If I have the truth, why should the truth change? You don't have the truth. So as time goes on, your errors are pointed out, and you've got to change things around. I don't need to, because God's infallible. You so know, I, Klaus, I yes. remember when, when I was a young kid, I had a friend who, first she got her tonsils out, uh -huh. and then she got her appendix out. And I think it was for the very reason that you just were talking Did, about. The doctor actually believed this. Thing. Yes, and that's why it was done. The only reason it was done. Now, they, I guess, the appendix... Uh, is useful, um, well, I'm thinking, I guess, of the uh, tonsils. Infections. The, the infections. Yeah. yeah. So both of them are part of the immune system. Both, part of, okay, so both are part of the immune system now. So time will tell. And ultimately, time will tell who's right, the evolutionist, the creationist, mm -hmm. when everybody goes to the final resting place. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the Lord comes back. And that's yeah. something that I can't wait for. I'm getting more. Just Lord, please come back and <laughs> uh, vindicate your word and your name and, and take control of the final decision. Take, take authority. Okay, so vestigial organs. So we, here's a picture of, again, an embryo that's typically used by evolutionists to show. We have these throat pouches. Okay. Uh, but those are not gills. Uh, you know, they, they were called gill slits. Uh, mm -hmm. But they are actually uh, going to become the thymus gland, the parathyroids, and the middle ear canals. Mm -hmm. And they just happen to look like that at that stage of development. They're not gill slits. Then there's this yolk sac. Okay. Well, that's a blood forming sac, and it's used by the embryo to, to, to generate the first blood cells that the tissues need. So that's an important function. It's not a leftover evolutionary vestigial function or vestigial organ. And then finally you've got them saying, oh, these, these embryos, even man has a tail, okay, leftover uh, vestigial tail. Well, no, that's where the muscle attachment is going to be for the, on the tailbone, and that's where the muscles are going to attach. So that's why <coughs> that's important. Um, so the other, so now we're going to look at some of the uh, uh, human, uh, uh, not humans, but uh, Hominids, 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 they were presented uh, as part of the uh, Scopes trial. The first one was Neanderthal man. And uh, that, the first fossils were found in the Neander Valley in Germany in 1857, so quite a, a bit before the Scopes trial. So they had those fossils on hand. Um, and that's why it's called Neanderthal man. Um, they were found in caves, probably uh, these, these individuals lived sometime during the Ice Age. They had a brain volume actually slightly larger than modern man. And even evolutionists, most of them will tell you that the cranial capacity is directly proportional to intelligence. Mm -hmm. So if that's true, that the Neanderthals were actually smarter than modern humans. And there's something to be said that because sometimes I think man is getting stupider mm -hmm. as time goes on. He was actually smarter a thousand, two thousand years ago. So now uh, it's a compliment to be called a Neanderthal. Yeah, Neanderthal. Yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> you know this. Um, anyway, a side evidence indicates a well-developed culture, art and religion. They crafted, used tools, they had a spoken language, they kept records, they buried their dead with religious rites. They were totally human individuals. Okay just with slightly different uh, uh, facial features. Now, some of the bones are curved, and when they try to reconstruct these bones, it made it look like these creatures sort of were hunched over, bent over like, like apes. So they were initially believed that they were apes, but it turns out that there are bones of Neanderthals that are found in the Middle East that do not have the curvature of the bones. And now it's believed that the curvature of those bones is due to vitamin D deficiency, because they lived in caves and they lived in a climate where they weren't getting a lot of sun that could met metabolize the chemicals in the body to produce the vitamin D for the strength of the bones. But they were totally human uh, in individuals. Okay. And then we've got, huh, my goodness, 
That's Java land. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Pithcanthropus erectus, later called Homo erectus. Okay. Um, found in 1891 by Dr. Eugene Dubois. Consisted of an ape skull cap, a human thigh bone, femur, and two teeth scattered over a 50 foot area. From these four bones, the drawing to the right was sketched. <laughs> sparse, sparse uh, evidence, okay? But there's this preconceived bias, do you think? Okay. Um, however, more human bones were found closer to the thigh bone, complete with tools and other evidence that, that the people there, uh, that the bones they found that were of humans and mixed in with animals, with maybe the, the animals that they had killed in Eden. Uh, I don't know. Um, the Bois later dismissed his own finds as unrelated parts of a human and a giant divinity. In 1889, he found two completely human skulls at a deeper level, okay, in, in, a, in a, uh, a rock layer deeper. He had hid these skulls under the floorboards of his house for over 30 years. Okay. Why? Because of the evolutionary bias. Okay. <coughs> But at least later he came clean. But this was presented as evidence at the Scopes trial. Uh, what was interesting is a judge prevented uh, Brian, uh, William Jennings Bryant, from testifying okay, at the trial. So the prosecution didn't have an opportunity to present a lot of the evidence that was available at the time to expose some of this. Um, the cornerstone of uh, of the scopes trial as far as human evolution from apes was concerned was Piltdown Man. Um, <laughs> and that became known as the most elaborate hoax. Okay? This was the cornerstone stone of the scopes evidence. Mm -hmm. Part human skull and part ape jaw was found in 1912, 13 years before the scopes trial. But unfortunately, in, 1908, in 1953, long after the scopes trial, using fluorine uh, dating, dating tests, admitted to be a fraud. Modern bones were stained to look old. The ape's teeth were obviously filed to make them look more human. Basically, this was a skull of a human attached to the jawbone of an ape. Handcrafted tools had been fraudulently placed next to the bones to give the appearance of an intelligent ape. Totally hoax. But that was the cornerstone of the scope's evidence, of the, of, of the, of the evidence for evolution in defense of John Scopes. Okay. And then, uh, I, uh, this picture here is just meant to indicate to you uh, several of the types of Austro Australia Pippa scenes that, um, that they were aware of during the Scopes trial. Um, this one was also presented, Australia Pithecus Africanus. And the original specimen was found by a guy named Dr. Raymond Dart in South Africa in 1924, just a year before the trial. Uh, well, I guess several months before the trial. So it must have been like December. Uh, it was dubbed the missing link, and it came to be known as the Tom child after the quarry in which it was found. It consists of facial bones and a lower jaw. Okay, um, But they reconstructed an entire creature out of just mm -hmm. the facial That's bones and a lower jaw. Today, this specimen is dismissed, dismissed by many evolutionists as that of a chimpanzee. They, 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 some of them, some of the evolutionists still have some scientific integrity, and they realize, no, this is probably a, a chimpanzee, uh, not not a small human intermediate ape child. Okay, um, but the hunt for the missing link in Africa was on. And uh, doctors Lewis and Mary Leakey continued with their son, Dr. Richard Leakey, and doctors. Donald Johansson and Tim White, Richard, and they all were involved in finding more fossils. What's interesting is they complain they never find fossils of extinct apes. <laughs> yeah, that's a complaint. We never find fossils of extinct apes. Well, maybe you are, but you just don't want to call them extinct apes. Ever thought of that? Okay, the final status of the Scopes trial, evolution, evolutionary evidence. Embryonic recapitulation. Falsified disproven. Horse sequence, falsified disproven. <coughs> Vestigial organs, falsified disproven. Neanderthal man was human. Java man 
was a giant gibbon plus some human bones mixed in with that. Piltdown man, an elaborate hoax, complete hoax. And Australopithecus africanus, the tongue child, was a chimpanzee. And these homino hominoid finds are based on sparse and fragmentary fossil evidence, and it's always open to speculation and reconstruction. I brought something to, to the for the group today, and uh, I'm going to sort of bias you. <laughs> we live in a kind of a rural area, and there's a lot of possums and raccoons that live in here. Matter of fact, we had we what we believe was a possum and a raccoon, raccoon fighting one night in our Asian pear tree, and it was quite a racket. So uh, several weeks ago, when we had one really heavy, heavy rains, we have a creek that runs through our backyard. And so my wife was down there walking, looking, and she discovered a skull. Not a human, okay. <laughs> so, otherwise the Riverside Police Department would be wanting to see me. But no, I found the skull. I found the skull here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, initially, <laughs> I'm still doing this. I still got... <laughs> <laughs> I showed this to my grandkids, they got a kick out of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want to get bitten by this, okay? So I'm thinking this is a possum, right? No, that's human. <laughs> <laughs> Very handsome. All right, well, I'm A for an evolutionist, okay? Yeah, this is an ancestor of, of modern human. Yeah, right. But I brought this in just to show you how easy it is to make mistakes. And if you're already biased as an evolutionary scientist, you might. You might have great degrees and you might be an intelligent person, but you've got this bias because you don't want to accept the fact that there's a God because if you accept the fact that there's a God, it means that you're accountable to that God and I don't want to be accountable to that right. God. We've already seen H.G. Uh, Wells' uh, uh, comment on that. So I'm thinking, well, this is this is probably a possum, okay? Possum doesn't uh, have a keen idea. Uh, see, he's, he's ahead of me. Uh, he's ahead of me. So then I thought, well, I went online. I went online, okay? <laughs> oh, and I looked at uh, up a possum skull, and this is not a possum skull. And I looked up a raccoon skull. This is not a raccoon skull. I finally went to the place where it looked, where it said dogs. Dogs, dog skull. yeah. This is a dog skull. That's right. Okay, that's what that is. But see, I made a mistake, but I'm not a, a biologist. And I'm thinking, well, that, that, was a, that was a possum, and it's not a possum at all. It's uh, the dog skull. Goes in the museum. <laughs> yeah. My youngest son used to have a little mu museum in his room and collected little artifacts like that. <laughs> so, what about initial evidence that wasn't presented in the Scopes trial? And I, I'm just pulling this. this um, we have Nebraska man. This was evidence uh, that was available during the Scopes trial, but it wasn't introduced. Okay. But it was in the press three years, three years prior to the trial. From a single tooth, an ape-like man was drawn. The drawing shown here, okay, there's, there's a tooth, me. okay. And it went from that to that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an artist's conception of the Nebraska man, from the tooth, just the tooth, that's all. Um, in a London newspaper published during the year of the Scopes trial, two years later, Nebraska man was back to being just a tooth because the same type of tooth was found in a real skull. Okay. Attached to a real skeleton, and it turned out not to be the tooth of a man's ancestor, but the tooth of an extinct pig. Now, see, <laughs> if, but see, the point is, if they can make mistakes like that, they can make other mistakes. And like I say, in these textbooks, and you go online, they make a really wonderful argument for these things. But are they real? If they conflict with the scripture, we need to really be skeptical and do our own homework and our due diligence. If, if, is this really what they're telling us it is? I don't think it is. Um, there's, uh, th this is a reconstruction. The, the lower jaw bone here, this is what was actually found. Okay, and there's some reconstruction back here, and this is a piece of bone right here that was put back into the back of the skull. Okay, um, and that's another reconstruction down there. So this is Peking Man. Okay, um, only the skulls, there's never been a lower skeleton of Peking Man found. 
And this was found in a cave outside Peking, China, today it's Beijing. Peking is Beijing, China, before World War II. By the way, it's interesting, there was, how many of you ever watched uh, um, uh, Hawaii Five-O, the original Hawaii Five-O with, um, um, what was it? Name? Jack Lord. Huh? Jack Lord. Jack, Jack Lord. Lord, Jack Lord. I really like that guy. Um, they actually had an episode where this Peking band was involved in that episode, and the bones were stolen. And uh, they were part of, uh, supposedly in a crate that the army in China had smuggled out, and then there was supposedly drugs involved, and they threw the bones away and put the drugs in there instead. Of, I don't know. But but the, the point is that um, they, they did disappear. The original fossils did disappear. No one knows what happened to them. But um, the skull cap, if you want to call it that, was found with some other animals, a few tools, of evidence of human culture. The skulls were very monkey-like. They all were bashed in at the rear. It was assumed that the owners of the bashed in skulls must have used the tools and were tooled using apes. Okay? Again, that evolutionary bias. However, since monkey brains are even to this day a delicacy eaten in that part of the world, many now believe that the tools were used on rather than by Peking man and monkeys. Mm -hmm. They were basically a, 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 extinct, a large extinct monkey. So here we have Afri, let's see, Australopithecus bozzi, okay. And again, found in 1959, there were tools found uh, with uh, this, uh, this, sc this skull. Uh, Louis Leakey discovered it. They assumed that the creature made the tool, but 13 years later, Richard Leakey found beneath these bones that his father unearthed bones virtually, and this is his words, uh, Richard Leakey's words, bones virtually indistinguishable from those of modern man in a, in a rock layer lower than the one that A. Bosby was found in. Okay? So again, according to the evolutionary sequence, that can't be, you know, that can't be a, an ancestor or something that occurred okay. before. So, um, going down is the whole toolmaker hypothesis. At the time, Richard Leakey said his discovery shattered standard beliefs in evolution. I would say so, okay, at the time. That's sort of been forgotten, sort of swept under the rug. But it was a, it was a big earth-shattering uh, revelation when, when it was first discovered. So, uh, this particular fossil has been reclassified uh, from, it used to be called Xenjanthropus, and now it's called... Um, a. Bozzi, or Australopithecus Bozzi. And it's now considered a gro grossly ape-like and extinct line of ape, not really related to man at all. And by the way, again with that skull, I could have an artist here and he could draw me sinews and muscles and skin and fur and all that on that and make that skull look very different. Okay. Get into a possum. What, whatever. Yeah. And so here, here's actually drawings that people <laughs> made of that skull that was discovered. Okay. Yeah, someone's uh, wisecracked nutcracker man. Talk about a no-brainer. Very little brain. And then another one. There's another drawing of the thing. <laughs> Wasn't that a Wookiee from Star Wars? I don't know. But again, they do things like that to make it look like. Yeah, these are ape-like uh, men or whatever. Uh, Those are actually published as... Yes, they were published in a British newspaper. <laughs> and then we have Australio Afrinesis. Okay, Lucy. We call all her, her Lucy. Fossils were three and a, uh, of a specimen three and a half foot tall, uh, discovered by uh, Donald Johansson in 1974, nicknamed Lucy, about 40% of the skeletal remains with no skull but fully ape-like lower jaw. These are the bone fragments of Lucy over there. Um, and that looks like a previous slide. Too. It's it it they is. All the other one looks like it, a previous slide. And the reason it is is because these are the three classes of Australia oh, okay. So okay. these are the three classes. Okay. Uh, Australia from, su these are s southern apes. So uh, uh, Austral, means to the south. So mm -hmm. these are a class of Apes. supposedly uh, um, man-ape creatures uh, that were found in southern Africa originally, and then they're found in different parts of Africa. <coughs> so they're called southern apes, basically. So they're, they're, 
the class of southern apes, and then this one's uh, Aphorensis. So there was no full skull found. Um, Johansson points out that in the area he finds these fossils, he finds many indigenous African animals, but never apes. He found all, all sorts of different kinds of an African animals, but never apes. Well, maybe that's a type of ape that you just found. <laughs> Computer simulations yeah. have shown that if the so-called Australopithecines walk upright, it was in an ape-like manner. Okay, that's true. But today, many scientists believe that these various remains are those of young apes or orangutans of an extinct species. Even many evolutionists no longer believe this is uh, an intermediate to uh, man's uh, evolution. Then there were uh, four, additional, so four additional eight men candidates were uh, discredited since the Scopes trial. And that's them. Uh, that's just a summary. And again, pointing that out. So the final box score, one human, one human with given fossils were found. One hoax, one chimpanzee, one pig's tooth, <laughs> one extinct monkey, one extinct ape, one ju juvenile ape or orangutan, a zero ape man. Okay. So there's no real scientific evidence for human evolution. The Australopithecines, the southern apes, could not have been our ancestors, of course, if people were walking around before Lucy and our kin were fossilized. Again, there was human bones that were found below the rock layers that these bones are found in. And there's some evidence to suggest just that fossils of ordinary people in the mid-tertiary rock were found in uh, Castellan, Cast and Need, although, Italy back in the late 1800s before the Scopes trial. And the evolutionists, Sir Arthur Keith, recognized that accepting these pre ape finds would shatter his belief in evolution, or at least its scientific support. Oxnard, in 1979, calls attention to the Canopy humanid, a human upper arm bone found in rock strata in Africa laid down before those that entombed these Australopithecine remains. So they can't have been descendants. How did it end? Well, I've already alluded to it. Smokes was found to find $100, $1,366 in 2016 cash currency. But the verdict was later overturned on that technicality I mentioned. Uh, most importantly, though, the trial served its purpose of drawing intense national publicity, paved the way for evolutionary curriculum in the U.S. public school system, and caused millions of people to question their own faith. And the tragic results of that trial s still have repercussions that continue to this day. And five years later, I already mentioned this, the Roaring Twenties ended with a, a Roaring Crash. So, that's it. Scope that out well. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. So we, have, uh, we have a little bit of uh, official business. There's a basket going around. Uh, do, do put something in the basket. There are, there are expenses and so forth. We have a random match.